For a question like this, I know that picking zero is not going to work out. I can look at the answers. I can see that I have two 33s and two 29s. So I know that there is going to be some overlap, but it also doesn't really cost me much to try zero very quickly. And then, yeah, I double my odds of getting it right because now I've eliminated two answer choices and maybe save myself the danger of a careless mistake. So I'm going to do it anyway. So I'm going to make X equals zero like I always do. This is going to be five squared minus negative two plus two times three, right? So 25 plus two plus six. Okay, so 25 and two is 27 plus six is 33. So right away, boom, two choices are down. And now I can just compare. What's the difference between the choices? 21x or x, right? So now I can do the algebra if I want and I can do it exclusively focused on that piece. Or I could pick another number because now if I pick x equals one, I know they're gonna be different and so I might just get the answer that way. Let's deal with the x equals one just because this is an arithmetized kind of situation. So let's see what happens if we do that. So here we go, x equals one. This becomes two times one plus five, so that's seven squared minus one minus two. Actually, let's just get right to it. This I would do in my head, and this is probably what I'd write on my uh, paper. So one minus two is negative one uh, plus two times four. So that's 49 plus one plus eight, so that's 58. So I can kind of already look at choice uh, D and be like, okay, four plus one plus 33, that's, that's too low. Like I don't even need to do the actual arithmetic or put it in a calculator to know that it's not gonna get it. Four plus 21 is 25, plus 33 is 58. So that works. I like that. I just, honestly, I really, there's a big danger here. 2x plus 5 squared. In order to actually do that, you're going to need to do the foiling out. 2x times 2, or 2x plus 5 times 2x plus 5, that's 4x squared plus 10x plus 10x plus 25. So 4x squared plus 20x plus 25. But many of you are going to just do it like a distribution and do 4x squared uh, plus 25 and miss out on that extra 20x. And notice what's the difference between these two answers, 20x, right? So if you do the algebra and you make the mistake that they're hoping you make, you're gonna get it wrong. So even if there's a 1%, 2% chance of you making that careless mistake of forgetting how the algebra works for um, exponents, you've gotta move away from that algebra. You've gotta have this alternative. And this is really the key with arithmetizes with any SAT strategy. It comes down to admitting you are not perfect. You have flaws in the way that you think about math and the way that you do math. And the SAT is gonna take full advantage of those flaws. Luckily, the strategies lower the chance that we make those kinds of mistakes and ultimately save us points. And I really truly do not think that arithmetizing here is any slower than doing the algebra. It's at best, it's comparable. I think it's actually faster because again, I can do arithmetic in my head so I can deal with a lot of this really easily, but you can have a calculator, you have Desmos. So a lot of that arithmetic also, you can just type in little bits and let the calculator do that as long as you're doing the little pieces like two times one plus five. Okay, hopefully you can do that. But I really want to stress like, they design the wrong answers to mess with you. This is such a great opportunity to get used to arithmetize and to actually use it for a question like this on the test so you don't fall for those algebra traps.